G'day, how you going? Ian Apples here, you're a cool guru from Australia. Welcome to my video and a very Merry Christmas to everybody. It's that time of the year where it's festive and Christmassy. So I hope we're all having great times with our family and friends and sharing the festive gift around, all right? We'll get some sizes on the canvas panel there in centimetres and inches. And as normal, we'll get some colours scooting up the screen there for you as well, so you can jot them down, all right? And now I've got my canvas panel here. Now, as you saw in the opening credits, it's a tall ship. I found this on Pixabay, so I've printed it out, and I've shown before how I scribble on the back against the window. You can see the picture through the light on the window, and I scribble it out on lead pencil. That's if you do not have transfer paper or carbon paper. If you have that, you just put that on and make your transfer onto your canvas. But we're gonna do that later because I wanna do the background first and then put this on top of it, okay? So get on over here, I'll show you the picture and we'll get into it, all right? That's the picture I found on Pixabay. Now I'm only gonna use it for the tour ship aspect. Maybe the birds I'll change around and the sky I'm gonna do my own way, okay? You can do it the exact as it is or here's a good example how to copy from a reference picture. What you can do, you can put your own style of water and your own colors and flavors of sky, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, I've got my student craft poster white soft flowing paint here and I've put a puddle of retarda in it and I'm gonna mix all that up with my two inch synthetic putter on a brush. And so as we got a beautiful surface to blend our sky colors and some clouds if we're going to have them, okay? First thing, I'll get all this white paint on my canvas. I'm gonna do the whole canvas. Sometimes I divide the water level, the horizon line, and do it separately, depending on how long I think it'll take. You might notice I've got some tape on the side of my canvas there, here and over here, because normally when I prep my canvas, a lot of the paint goes on the side there. So when I finish the sky, the prepping, I'm gonna take that away. So I'm not hitting that and bringing colors into my canvas that I don't want. All right, so I'm gonna just brush stroke that nice and neatly. Now on my palette, I've laid out my Indian yellow, my Parole red, my cer cerulean blue, and this one is dark scene purple, just in case I want a bit of darkness up the top there, all right? Now I wanna grab the, I'll just contaminate, I've washed that brush, but I just wanna contaminate it a little bit with this, just to turn the headlights on onto that Indian yellow, see there? Because it's, it's a bit of an opaque color, that one. And wherever your horizon line is going to be, this can go right in the guts of it, all right? Meaning in the middle. I've got my horizon line there, but I might bring it up somewhere here anyway. So I'll just bring that across the canvas, so easy. I've got my brush sideways now, and I just want to blend that in a way. Now, I will just wipe the brush. I've just wiped it on a rag. Picking up some of the red now and I'm gonna bleed it with the orange, not the orange, silly, with that yellow to create an orange. That's the parole red, and I wanna get that there, okay? And a little bit down here, okay? Now, wipe it into the, I'm, I'm massaging it into that yellow so it's kind of blending. I'm gonna crisscross that down into the yellow there so it's not such a line. We want it to look like nature, not like a factory. Put it on the canvas. Now I'm gonna pick up the red on its own. So we've got our orange there now. I thought I'd be brave and leave the door open and a bloody fly's got in here now and he's buzzing around me head. So let's get some of this on there and get that right here. Beautiful, now we've got a red. I'm not gonna to worry too much in the water now because the water's, I want a bit of a darker color in there. So now we've got our red. Uh, picking up the blue, I haven't washed the brush, I'm just picking up the blue, it's going to create a bit of a purple. And we'll get this on there, oh that looks very purpley, I better rub that down. I'm going to wash the brush now because that's too grey purple, I don't want that. So I'm going to stop and wash my brush. So I've washed my brush and I've put the blue on it, we'll get it all the way up here. All the way up there. Let's go right to the top. Get some more on there. 
get it all the way to the top. Finish the bottom area down there. I'm hoping, where's my camera? Yeah, you can just see the bottom. I'll get to that in a minute. Okay, I'm just getting the bottom massaged. I want to wipe that brush and then get this blue now beautifully brushed in there the way I want it. I think I'm going to put some wickedly nice clouds into this. Now I want to pick up the dioxine purple just to give a darker element way up tippity top there, all right? Just up here, I'm going to get right at the top, right at the top there. Okay, and I want to bring that down into the blue. There we go. Beautiful, oh my goodness, that looks like a rainbow sky. I don't want a rainbow sky. I'm just getting some of these darker elements in the water. Now that it's washed, I'll just use it to get that water nice and level. We've got some darker elements in there. Beautiful, ready for our tour ship. Okay, now I will put a setting sun and some clouds in there, all right? Hmm, I have some pounces down here. I probably want this size here. Yeah, that'll do it. Beautiful. Now I'm just going to damp that and pick up some of this titanium white on my pouncer. So somewhere around, where are we here? Somewhere there. It's just kind of like setting. And I want to dance it around now and fade it around. This is going to add that glaring element artistic yumminess to our painting. Um, if anything, I'm slowly doing a football egg shape now as I'm prancing it out into this colour here. And this, this, the stampy noise is gone and now it's just a padding noise. So I'm taking advantage of that dry padding noise just to soften it a bit more. I'm not worried about the water. What I might do in the water is just ooze that into there a bit more. Okay, and where my water is, get something there like that. Grab the um, brush and a blending brush. And first I'll do the top half here. I just want to softly sit that back down into the sky there on a horizontal movement. That's it, beautiful. And I'll grab the other brush that I had and I just want to pull the um the reflection of the sun in the water just like that just to get a beautiful artistic look there there we go and the horizon line's there but i'm not going to actually draw a line there it's just in the distance okay picking up more titanium white out of the tube with a fan brush and i've got another blending brush here ready to rock and roll I want some clouds in the sky, so we'll put some linear ones here first, just to create the um, illusion of depth and perspective in the sky. So I like to put some of those there, just like that. Grab the um, blending brush and just lightly sit that down onto the painting there, okay? These are great. Maybe a bit lower. There's something there. Just cutting in front of that glaring sun there. And do the same again. Lightly. I'll leave the top there, Ian. I'll keep hitting in the top. Just soften the bottom down. Now I want to try and create the skin the clouds all the way from the sun coming over to us. So how I'm going to do that, I'm going to do it in a linear way and just kind of go like this, pushing it on. I'll do, I've got to do a bit at a time. Okay, so there's that. Uh, where'd my blending brush go? There it is. Pick up the blending brush and wipe it as you go. Um, I want to leave pretty much, I don't want to blend the bottom down to the atmosphere. I just want to give it a bit of a bum and Give some turmoil in that, just like that. Beautiful. Right, as you lay the next cloud on, it'll create, you know, like 
dimension and depth and all that sort of lovely stuff. So we've done that. Wipe your blending brush and do the same again. Leaving the bottom on so it puts it in front of that other cloud and twist it out, get the turmoil going. Leave the bottom on. Beautiful. Now I've got to wash that brush again because it's got dirty so quick and pick up some more titanium white and then we can put some more clouds there. All right, I've got the camera actually a bit higher looking down on the canvas for this angle and we want something maybe here now, scooting across, trying to keep the bottom area there and I'm just dancing it on. I'm keeping it within the red before I get too much into the blue. Uh, blending brush, where did I put it? There it is there. Uh, I want to keep the bottom on. I'll sort of come out there a bit. Beautiful. Bit of turmoil. See, with the clouds, as I'm putting these on, sometimes they're adopting the one value of tone there, see? Don't worry about that. When that happens, that's when you're painting saying, hey, this one needs some yumminess. So we'll do that later. And you'll see what that does. Okay, we've got those ones there. Okay, now I'm going to start coming into the probably the blue colour. So we might trace some of that there. Give it a bit of body. I'm keeping the brush across the painting, not up and down like that with this fan brush, okay? Getting them on there. And like I did before, it's important to keep the bottom on this. If I blend that down, it's going to just look like a wall of clouds. When the bottom's on it, creates the look where they're coming over our head. Let me get my hand out the way for a minute. So the bottom's on there, scooting in front of that a bit, wipe the brush, and then there's another bit of a bottom there, leave it there, the top can come up into oblivion. There's a bottom on another one there, the top can come up, okay? And when this painting's finished, they will look like they're coming from the distance and out over your head. That's the illusion what you want to try and get, okay? We'll just put some more here. We're coming into the purple now. The colours are wet on the canvas still, and they're going to allow all these blues, purples, and reds, oranges, whatever, to happen. Twisting turmoil. Turmoil's the key. See, you get all weird, wonderful cloud variances in your sky. We'll get some over here, just one more here maybe. So you can see what I've done. Wipe my brush. Tell you what, I'm just looking at my coffee. I'm feeling happy, confident. I've done some beautiful clouds and I'm gonna have a drink of my lovely coffee. Now there's the clouds, like I said. Let me just get rid of that tape, like I mentioned before, because I don't wanna start bringing that into the painting now. Where is my knife? Here we go. So I just want to peel that off. There we go, one. I'll leave the camera on while I do this because some people like to see this sort of stuff happen. I know when I was beginning and I was watching, there was more to the actual painting I like to have seen happen on the camera. Okay, and we can add our yumminess. Before I do, I want the smallest one down here as well, just because I do. There, that's just white paint. I'll leave the top on that one and then blend the, oh my goodness, what's on that? Big chunk of dioxide purple. I'll leave the bottom on that, I mean the top on that, and blend the bottom down, okay? But I've got to muck around with it now because look at that big blob of dioxide. Don't know where that came from. You put as many as these depth clouds, I'll call them, in as you want, and then start with your sky. So we'll just put some of the yumminess in. So the red one's here. Just blend the yumminess back, okay, but not too much. You want to leave the vibrancy there, as I've mentioned before. If you've seen my videos before, you leave in the glare of that yumminess you put on, but blending it down enough to sit. Did that make any difference? Sometimes you might think it's 
not quite working Ian, but the more you do it, you'll understand the method. When you understand the method, you'll see it working, but sometimes you might not. There we go, I'm just trying to finish this off. We'll get something over here. See there, just in front of there. I'll, I want to leave this vibrancy there, but blend it down in a way just so it gives that cloud dimension. See what that's done? Okay, now there, we've got a good sky. It's still wet. I've got to dry it now because the tall ship's going to go here. Uh, I've got the nice glaring sun coming down as an element there, and I might put some birds there. And if you want, which I think I will do, I'm going to put just a little slight just in front of this glare here and across to that side, a bit of land mass just to break it up and give it that artistic vibe about it, all right? I've dried it. I've just put a bit of tape there just so I can get the horizon reasonably straight. And I'll go for the dioxine purple. I'll just use that. I'll use it for now. If it's too loud, I'll change it off camera later with some darker brown or black. But I just want something in front of that horizon. Sun over there. So we want to start, where are we? It's about there. So I want to, I want to do it just probably just like, I don't know, trees maybe. This is just a flat brush, something flat. some birds there as well later. That's it, beautiful. Just something out there breaks it up. Okay, I've got some of the um, dioxine purple mixed with the burnt umber, the brown there, just to get a dark colour. Now I'll get me bullshit stick and we'll just put the hint of some small birds. So I'm going to do like a... Give him his head and his tail and that can brought out a little bit there it's just a detailed little silhouette flying there in the background and we want quite a few of these they're all flying the way they are in the picture i'll do them a little bit different than the picture but same same but different if you know what i mean And just finishing off, so I've got some bigger than others, smaller than others, sort of in different shapes. Some are flying this way, some are flying over our head, and some are flying over that way. But the smaller you go, the further away they are, and the bigger you go, the closer they are. Okay, that'll do for the birds. Okay, I've dried all this. I'm hoping it's as dry as I can get it. Now I want to stick this image on there where I want it. See, what I'm not too keen on, I like the layout of the picture, the subject, it's very nice and arty. But what I'm not too happy about with the boat, I'll just show you so you'll know what I mean. I'll get this on there first. See, the horizon line's up here on this picture, but the boat is going down where the, the view on this boat should have been there. It's out of perspective. That's just my take on it. I'm gonna get a bit more tape here. Now I'm using a red pen. And I want to get the main layer. I'm not going to do all the detail like I'll show you here. I'll get a sail on. The mask is roughly there. I'm just going to do a line for it. I'm not going to do the whole thickness of the line because I, I can thicken that up with the paint as I go. Uh, I want to at least get the sail shapes. And if there's any too much busy detail in the background i'll leave that out just for the art sake so i will edit it up a bit okay now we'll take that off i don't need that anymore yeah going back to the perspective of the boat so you got the boat here and the perspective of it's coming down here where it doesn't make sense if the water's from there over here that needed to be a bit more out so i've just adjusted it in my layout but Otherwise, this could have been brought right up to the horizon line, this part, and then it would have made sense with perspective within the picture. Now, I'm going to use a variety of flat brushes. Uh, I'm just using the craft paint because it's a lot flowy, and I want to just prime in all that area I traced on. 
and a flat brush is great for this. So I want to just prime it all on. And if you prime it on like I'm doing, you'll get beautiful, vibrant colours within your colours. And this principle goes for anything in a painting, whether you're painting a nice, colourful, rainbowy bird or anything. It helps as a beginner. You might have a paint you don't realise is opaque and very thin and you're trying to get the red onto a darker surface and you're just seeing the darker colour come through all the time. So that's why it pays to prime them up. Okay, I've mapped that in, I've primed it up. Now don't let a uh, reference picture put you off with the amount of detail they have. I've edited mine out. I'm not gonna have so much busy stuff going on and a reference picture can put you off if you think there's too much there. Just keep it simple like I'm going to do here. I'm not gonna have too much busy stuff. I'm just gonna have the main layout of the flags or the sails and the mask and some ropes down the bottom there, okay? Okay, I've got the dioxine purple over here and I've got yellow oxide here, or yellow ochre. Now, I wanna get some of the dioxine purple, cause the purple, I wanna mix up a darker value of this, just using the purple to do that. And that'll be our shadow colors. And also, oh, I don't have it too dark, just enough. There we go, so I'm gonna mix this up. And we'll have the actual yellow ochre as the color as well. And we can have some white as well. So we'll get some white mixed up in there as well. I want to spray that with my squirty bottle. And I'll, I'll just grab another brush just to mix up the lighter value ones. So we've got some here and some white. So I'll pull some white into this. And I'll just do it over here so we've still got some neat yellow ochre. There we go. So I've pretty much got the colour, a lighter value and a darker shadow value, okay? All right, and the same like anything, you want to work from the back to the front. So at the very back, I'm just picking up some black on a script liner uh, and I'll get the, uh, the mask. Now, I'll, I can see me reference picture. I'm going to use it just as a reference. So that way that sail can be painted in front of it. So we'll get the main mask down. And then as it comes down, it's got all busy, busy bits of hardware on it, busy stuff. So we'll get all this on there pretty much where we'll see it, a bit there. But there's a lot of black here, so I'm going to just map in all this. I don't know what I'm doing here, but I'm trying to create that to be the back of the boat up here instead of way down there to try and suit the horizon line over there. So I'm just doing that. You use any um, ship you want here. I'm just using this one because I thought the artistic values of it look quite nice. So I'll get that about there. All right, now I've got the yellow ochre on its own and I'll use this for the color of the sails. See how it was able to come in front of that mask and see how this white has primed it up. Okay, I've done that much so far. Before it gets too dry, I'm picking up some of the darker value now. And I want to just look at the reference and see roughly where the, the shadowy bits go, just so as they're going to scrumble and merge quite nicely. So this is pretty much all the way around this half of the sail there. So I'm just leaning on a big paintbrush here as a steady stick. These steady sticks have a name for them, but you know what? I wouldn't for the life of me know what they call them. So I want that just so as I can scrumble into that lighter colour and just make the transition more 
funky, artistic, wow, and good looking, you know. Where does it go? It goes pretty much all the way around here. And then we got some more on the other ones. Pretty much dark corners here. Just look at your reference picture and work it out. Uh, there's pretty much dark behind there. But I'll do that one first. This is a behind one. So I'll get that a bit dark there. Now just getting to the end of colouring in these sails, blocking them in. Because what really makes all this pop, believe it or not, is when we add the little fine dark lines and detail it with that as well, with our black stuff and whatnot, that's really going to make this thing pop. I'm getting the darker value mixed with the dark scene purple now, looking at the reference, and now I've got these ones, they're pretty much all in front of there. Where did that one come down to? To about here. So that one's coming down to about here. And where's his line? There it is, there's one, two, three, there it is there, so it's pretty much all the way over here. Boom. So he's in front there. Okay, that's there. There we go, love it. I think I'll put that dark colour. And we've got a, another one here. All the way over to there. And we've got, I'll fix that up later. I want to quickly get this one in there. And this one's there. I've just noticed in the reference picture as well, this one's in front of that, but there are some distinct shadows that cut across the top of this sail and getting those shadows in makes the world a difference to the detail, wowness, bullshittingness of your painting. Uh, where else did I see some shadows? And there's probably some within here, within this one at the back. So I'll get him shadowed in as well. And maybe here. one at the back. I'm getting some of the darker value because uh, the boat's in silhouette light. It's pretty much all the same colour. So I'm going to darken this hole up and highlight it appropriately. It's got this mask, a big thick solid mask coming up here and then it does have a lot of ropes coming off it so I'll I want to get this on there and then shadowed appropriately. Since I started filming, some people ask how long does it take me to do a painting. This would have been finished well and truly into my second coffee afterwards if I wasn't filming. Um, since the camera went on after setting up, it's been an hour and a half now. So we've got some of that there and we've got a lot of busy dark stuff happening here as well that I'll gradually get in there, some of that. Now just grabbing some of the lighter value that I've mixed up, I'm looking at the painting there, I want some of this just behind there, coming down, there's light there coming down on that back sail, getting that in there, and is there any up there, there's a li little bit hitting it there, okay. I'll finish that back one off and anything else that might be at the back which is here and then I'll put back and forward some darker bit. Now there's a really light bit from the side here. I'll get that on there. Where are we? About there. Just getting the lighter value now, and within these masks, I'm going to try and 
emulate the the light hitting the pillow of these masks I know down here there's a nice sharp bit of white there light coming there what about over there here somehow oh I've got to be careful not to touch the painting now I've got paint all on the side of my me und uh, where are we here now down there so And like I said before, we are going to put some nice, vibrant black lines, rope lines and everything within this. And that's really going to bring it home. And we've got some right tight under there and comes down between every layer of these three. Where else are we? Oh, nice bits of light coming here. And where the bits you might think something's missing there Ian don't worry it's not I just haven't got it there yet it's the light I mean the light it's the black ropes when I put them on there there's all light hitting this corner of the sails here I'm pretty much just I'm not copying the um, picture exactly, but just want to fix the hole up as well. Get some other color values within there. Something up there. Maybe something up there. Oh yeah, there's some bright light right behind there. It makes sense when it's all done. I'm just getting it ready now just to pretty much put the black um, just to finalize all the detail in it I've got a small flat brush and I'm going to use a script liner as well to finish it so now this is where you know there's I'll start up here actually is pretty much what the sails connected to goes a little bit beyond the sail just like that so we're pretty much going to do that along the tops of them and then we've got all sorts of ropes and strings where are we we got something coming from behind there from behind there we got something coming down here thinly as possible with stuff like this down here i'm going to grab the script liner just so you can see what i meant by the ropes as well where are we all sorts of ropes coming everywhere but you want these really thin pole coming all the way down here ropes coming where are they they're, they're pretty much all the way back here that's why I kept all that rubbishy there because it's in the background I'll have to do these ones with the script liner though because I don't want these nice and fat got all sorts of ropes coming that onto this main pole at the front of the boat. I don't know what they're called. I'm pretty sure they have a, well they would, they've got it their own name. 
I mean, this is not a detailed painting by any means, but it's a great subject for a beginner to paint. This is all that rope netting at the front there. Some of these big, tall sail ships have. Oh yeah, we've got a lot of ropes coming all the way from behind as well. So pretty much down there for some reason. They look bloody good, eh? Uh, where else are we? Yeah, we've got some ropes sort of loose there, like that in the in the mix. Uh, we got some right down there. Still just persevering with you know, detail of ropes and bits and pieces all over here. It's just ropes everywhere on these old ships, isn't there? And I'm looking at the um, reference picture there and there is just the slightest bits of white highlights now that I will need to just punch in there just to make things pop okay just want to grab some titanium white on a small flat and just looking at the reference picture there there's just highlights everywhere down in in the amongst all this blackness here uh, where else are we we got some maybe along here just breaking up stuff All sorts in there. Now, where else are we? Mm, bits and pieces, just I don't know. I do know that this has some highlights on it. Now you can see how I just cheated the detail of that ship with just nonsense down there really. I'm just looking, I feel something's missing. I want to like where these light bits were, I want to just accentuate them a bit brighter with some white, wherever all the white was. Just like that. Give it some sense of glow and lust and loveliness. Where else are we? Bits out here. Lightly touching it I am, but it will make a difference. Try not to cover up. This could have been done before you do all those ropes. And I think I want some... I'll go back over that rope bugger. I want some just over there because that's in the front. Now I'm just finishing it off. Where's this sail? That sail was there, so I'm getting some, just some darker values within there to accentuate that under here. Just to sit things back and forth from each other. And just to finish it off on these lines, mainly on the front of these sails here, I'm just getting rid of those distinct lines come around there like so just so as they're not like a big edge to line on there one there one there and this one here coming out oh I sound like a bloody pirate anyway and that's it now I'll be able to whack a signature in a frame on this and see how she looks. Be sure to check out the links in the description below. Join my art group page. I'm putting a little signature here with a gel pen. All right, now let's whack a frame on this. 
<sighs> yeah, that don't look too shabby in the frame. We've got our flavour, my flavour of the sky. We've got a tall ship, a little bit of land out here. Some birds obviously fluttering off that island there. Beautiful clouds coming over our head. You can do that, okay? Absolutely. And be sure to look at the links in the description below. All my art tutorial paintings are for sale. Uh, there's a link there to work out what's available. Uh, there's my Facebook page, Patreons, PayPal, uh, Reese's music channel. Beautiful music there by my son Reese. Have a listen to it. So proud of that boy. All right, tell your friends if you like what I'm doing. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, all right? All the best. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.